Mike Austin's golf swing method. Watch how fluid the late Mike Austin's golf swing is, especially in slow motion. The wheel power golf swing. An easy way to understand and visualize Mike Austin's swing concept. The weight shift maneuver in the wheel power golf swing is probably the most important movement in this golf swing. A lot of the flaws that you may be initially experiencing are probably due to an improper weight shift maneuver. So before we move on, I want to go into a lot more detail on some flaws that you may be doing with this maneuver. We start with a 50% distribution of weight on each leg. Our goal is to shift our center of gravity so that 75% of our weight has shifted over to our right leg and then 75% of our weight shifts over to our left leg. We need to keep 25% of our weight on the alternate leg so that we have some support. There's a shift, there's a tilt, and there's a turn. One of the common problems is that golfers will shift too far over their right leg so that it actually becomes straight. You want to make sure that when you shift your lower spine, there's an angle on your upper right leg. It doesn't go straight. If you shift your lower spine too far over to the right, your wheel turning framework is getting corrupted. You won't be able to hit the same bottom of the swing arc location. Another common problem with beginners to this swing is that instead of shifting, they just tilt and they turn all their weight mostly onto their left leg. Remember in this maneuver, there's a very specific order. You start shifting, then you start tilting, and then you start turning. Another common problem, which is similar to shifting too far to the right, is that golfers will accidentally let their right foot, their back foot slide or their ankle roll and you end up with the same problem. You end up going too far back. It's really important that that back foot does not slide or the ankle must not roll. That back foot braces your frame properly so that you come back to the same bottom of the swing arc. Here's another really important aspect of the weight shift maneuver. And this relates to your rear end. You need to feel that your rear end, both sides, are against a flat surface, like a wall. Your rear end must never go behind that flat surface or wall. So this is the way it works. Feel as though your rear ends, both sides, are against the wall. And when you shift, they're sliding along the wall. So you shift, you tilt, and now you turn away from the wall. What you don't do is shift, tilt, and turn so that your rear end goes behind the wall. Your rear end, both sides, never go behind that wall. So what we're emulating when we shift, tilt, and then when we turn, it's like we're a door or a gate that's turning on a post. We are not turning like this behind the wall. So going backwards, we shift, tilt, and turn away from the wall. 
And then our left rear end sort of comes back to the wall as we shift, tilt, and then we turn on our forward swing away from the wall. I'll do it from this angle as well. So we shift, we tilt, and then we turn away from the wall. Our left rear end comes back as we're shifting to the wall. And then we tilt and we turn away from the wall. We never go behind the wall. Here's another really important aspect of the weight shift maneuver. It is not a mirror image back and front. In other words, I start at the address position and then I go back. I do not come back to the address position and do a mirror image on the other side. If I do a mirror image on the front of what I did on the back, watch what happens. I go back and then I come back to my address position and then I go forward. If you'll notice, I'm doing an out to in swing path. I'm coming over the top if I come back to my original address position. The way the wheel power golf swing works is that I'm doing a diagonal shift of my right hip going forward. So instead of going back back to the center and then going forward what I'm doing is I'm going back and then I'm shifting diagonally that right hip as if it's going from back here diagonally ahead. So now watch what happens when I don't go back to the center address position but I do a diagonal shift of the right hip across forward. I come back and now I do a diagonal shift and you can see that I come from the inside to the center versus coming over the top when I come back to the address position. So by doing a diagonal shift, I'm going to hit the ball straight by doing a mirror image and coming back to the address position, I'm going to come over the top and most likely slice the ball. This is really important that you get that diagonal shift of the right hip going across. And it's really simple to learn how to do that diagonal shift if you do this drill. So I'm not going back, back to the center and forward. I'm going back and then I'm diagonally shifting from the side view, I'm not going back, back to the center and then forward. I'm going back and shifting diagonally across. If you can learn this diagonal shift correctly, you can say goodbye to slices.